Hello, and welcome to another edition of Spotlight on Home. As you see, I am all by myself right now. And there's a reason for that. <clears throat> I would like to speak specifically to the fathers. Um, I did a presentation, uh, the notes I'm about to read from, and uh, please bear with me that I might look like I'm reading, because I am. It, I have a lot to say, and uh, I don't want to miss anything. And the, uh, the points to be made here are pretty important. Um, it, it needs to be said. Um, I'm going to talk to you, the fathers. And this is this is almost like one of those strange situations where, you know, um, uh, the girls meet at somewhere and they become super friendly and then they're going to meet up and they're going to have the other family over and the dads have to like meet each other. And it's like, oh, I got to meet this guy. I don't know what the story is. Uh, or this this works the other way around too. A couple of guys meet and suddenly they're best friends and let's get the kids and the family and the wives together. And I, I don't know what it's like exactly for the women, but I'm going to guess it's not completely different. Uh, oh, I got to meet this woman and see how she is. Maybe maybe she's a weirdo. I don't know. Who, who knows? Maybe they're great. Maybe you guys all become best friends together. I'm sticking my neck out and I'm here to talk to the fathers of the homeschooling moms. Uh, and, and I know the dads are at a litany of different places on the spectrum as far as where they are in homeschooling. And uh, I was putting this very recording off for a while, but I had seen a post on Facebook <coughs> um, in a homeschooling group. And the, uh, let me look at it right now. The, the question was, what is your biggest gripe about the homeschooling lifestyle? And I, I'm funnier than I am smart, so I had mentioned the big white van. And it got a bunch of chuckles and everything um, and whatnot. And, you know, I live and die on what's funny. But um, so, uh, one woman uh, said, My husband doesn't participate and is constantly telling me I need to put them back in school because, quote, I never see any... Uh, excuse me, I never see y'all doing schoolwork. Man, my heart goes out to that woman because that guy, I don't blame him for that. He is completely convinced of what is absolutely and perfectly normal as we understood school for the last hundred years. Um... He doesn't see it. Well, uh, I will. I will present a small challenge to him. Well, what part have you played, sir? And um, I'm not saying that to uh, poke you in the eye. I'm saying that to ask you. You know, obviously, you guys talked about it, and maybe, as the husband, you allow it. But, you know. Have you completely just relinquished this to her and then complain? Uh, to that, sir, I say, you know, go easy. That's not necessarily the right uh, position to have. Could you, sir, do more? Could you um, play some more major role than you currently are? I'm not saying you got to do it all because, yes, I get it. You're out there. I'm out there. In the world, I'm, I'm go to work, the quote-unquote concrete jungle. I go to New York City every day. I'm going to discuss some of that, uh, those points in a few minutes. Um, Dad, I'm got, I have news for you. This is your responsibility. And she is your helper. And, you know, even if your career is noble and honest and true, um, and you guys decided to homeschool, it is still your thing. Um, even though she may be the main um, contributor to it, uh, you are still responsible. So please go easy on your wife. Um, it just isn't. It isn't completely fair. And uh, I truly, uh, I will not mention where I saw this exactly because I, I don't want to call anybody out. I don't want them to feel. Uh, you know, any kind of strangeness about this. But um, I had done a presentation uh, at a homeschool, an online homeschool convention during the whole height of the coronavirus 
uh, thing, and it was uh, about how a working father supports his homeschooling family. And I am uniquely qualified to talk on this. And uh, let me just tell you who I am. And uh, I'm going to post this not just in Spotlight on Home, but because of the nature of this, I'm going to put this on YouTube and a couple other places um, just because I think this actually speaks uniquely to a, a situation that is not uncommon. Um, my name is Chris Corbett. I have a wonderful wife. Her name is Katie, as some of you know. I have eight children. Uh, and, you know, as the, the movie or the book, you know, it turns out for us, eight is enough. <laughs> but uh, I work, I live in Pennsylvania, uh, just at the eastern edge of Pennsylvania, and I work in New York City in construction. And um, more often than not, my commute is 100 miles each way, uh, every day. Uh, my hours are often wildly irregular, and uh, sometimes they're very, very long. Um, this condition uh, demands special attention to how and why a father needs to make intentional decisions on how to, to be not only supportive of his wife and children in their homeschooling experience, but present when you're not actually present. And I got a great presentation on this. Um, just hear me out, right? The first piece of advice I have is a vision or mission statement. Uh, I, for those of you who have listened to the Spotlight on Home podcast before, uh, you've heard us mention this very thing. Um, I suggest actually writing it down so it can be looked up, uh, looked upon uh, at times when things are, you know, kind of getting hard or foggy as to what you're trying to accomplish as a homeschooling family. Uh, for me, as a Christian, I use biblical standards. That might not be for uh, everyone, however, and I completely understand that. Um, this can be a simple standard you, you both believe is best uh, for you to reach for. Um, this standard, however, I would say should be very high and not necessarily easily attainable where you are at. Um, something to be aspired to uh, that will stretch you, your wife, and obviously press your children during their learning experience. Um, because in all of this, you should all be growing, not just casting down information into your children. This is a unique opportunity for you to grow as well. First, I want to put God's position here uh, to set up the framework um, uh, of where we need to be. Though our world is not always set up in our favor for this, it's not necessarily an excuse to fail to meet the requirements. I say not necessarily here because you will find yourself, and I'm speaking to the dads here that go out to work, you will find yourself outside some of the principles, especially as a working father. Uh, if you've never looked uh, into these principles clearly laid out in God's word, uh, on the surface, they seem reasonable, kind of goes without saying for an almighty God. Many of you have read these things before, but sometimes when you are dripping among other, uh, excuse me, when they are dripping among many other godly precepts and the total impact of what they say may not uh, come to their full realization. As many of us have heard before, when God repeats himself, we should pay very close attention. Why? Why listen to me tell you about this? Because for the saved of us, we know that we will be present with the Lord and will watch our sins be pardoned with the sacrifice of the Son. But consider that we are also liable to other commands besides classical sins. Remember what sin is? First, is doing what we are told not to do. Second is not doing what we are told to do. And the third is to even think of the other two. I'll give you a little bit more of my story, uh, only to try to build a situation that is much more relatable uh, to those of us that work uh, outside the home or long distances or do a lot of business travel or whatever. Some parts of my quote-unquote working father story are possibly on the extreme, as you'll soon see. 
I know not everyone has the same exact struggles, but since uh, at least I do, I feel there are plenty of others that come close or may even exceed my circumstances, either by work, related struggles, military deployment, the unique struggle of, you know, remotely co-parenting for those that, uh, uh, you know, have gone through divorces and whatnot. But uh, give me one second here. Ah, excuse me. So, my story. <laughs> Many of you are familiar with the term happy wife, happy life is the saying, right? Guys, you go to that concrete jungle or that mad world of the office and the brutal nature of sales and marketing or anything. You come home, you got to put all of that to bed. You have, your mission is actually home. Work is just work. At home is your life. So you must be an encouraging word at home to your wife, to your children. I don't know, do the in-laws live with you? It must be an encouraging word to them. Do you have a nephew that lives with you? Whatever, you, you must be the encouraging word because you are the example. At the end of the day, a week, a month, or a year, you, you are going to be where that house goes. Uh, you got to be familiar with the vision you both, both of you set out. Because if you just come up with a vision and cast it down and she's not a part of it, um, it's, it's going to be very difficult for that to work. Maybe, maybe she'll just, yes, sir. And that's great. Some wives maybe can do that. Not all of them will. It, they, you must co- Let's have a co-vision here. Um, you you got to be the gentle reminder of these things, the, the very mission you guys come up with um, as the task of educating and rearing your children. It happens all day, every day. I, I, <laughs> I laugh because I do tell my wife my job is easy. I go to work to New York City and deal with all that stuff. It's almost like a day off, you know, coming home and I, that, that, that the house is maybe crazy. Um, you know, eight kids, the house is going to be crazy from time to time. And I say, man, oh man, what's going on here? She goes, yeah, it's been like this all day. You know, for me to go to work is like almost a privilege. I, I don't suffer, you know, some of the stuff she faces. And this is why you must be a critical, critical role in being the encouraging word and holding her hand and going through this together. These are things you do for her. Now, I'm going to speak to guys as a guy. On the tactical side, you may be the general, but she she's in the trenches, which is a point I think I kind of just made. Um, the complaints of the foot soldier has about the general is the general makes decisions without a full understanding of the battle in the trench. Uh, much the same, a soldier may not be familiar with a specific struggle and needs the encouragement from the general to fight the good fight. This brings me to recommend a vision statement, uh, not only for the family in general, but one for the education goals, which I would refer to as the rules of engagement. That is a, I understand that that's kind of like a crazy analogy, Try and hear me out. If you are considering not sending your child to public or private school, there is uh, budgetary considerations that need to be uh, sort of fleshed out. Um, I have a simple standard. We, you, we, we've discussed this uh, even in the podcast prior that we have a standard we used. Um, find out what it would cost to send your kids to private school. Um, that would be your backup plan if homeschooling was not an option, say, legally. Um, for us, uh, the example of ours, and let me, let me just check my notes here. My local private Christian school was 6,000 plus per child 15 years ago. Currently, my local Christian school would cap my cost at about 7,000 plus total, regardless of how many kids we had enrolled. As you can see, there can be a tremendous variation in that number. However, this is you can use as your baseline. I feel there's no necessary reason to spend anywhere 
near $7,000 in a year. It, it's just not happening. But here, here the rest of the story here. In the beginning, it would be the most expensive. For us, it topped 5000 in the past. As we learned what worked and acquired more and more materials that can be handed down, the price has dropped considerably. This year, our bill will be right around, I think it's $2,000. And that's counting seven kids ranging from pre-K to, ju uh, to junior in high school for all curriculum, co-ops, extra lessons. That includes the field trips. And I mean, every little trip you take, you know, to the zoo and to all these other little things, the aquarium, we, you know, we, we, we go all over the place. That includes everything. And some of those things you were going to do anyway. That's in the school budget. We went through uh, several, to be honest, you, you got you to gotta deal with this as well. Uh, we went through several trial and errors in curriculum. You may want to, to buy one size fits all super package that looks and sounds awesome. Because, I mean, let's be honest, the people who are selling them, they all look and sound awesome, you know. They're going to be the great next thing. I don't, all I can do is press go at the beginning of the year and the kids are just going to do the whole thing. Uh, sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. Um, only to find out that one child doesn't really perform well uh, as this one over here. So you go and you get the next great super system and your other child doesn't like the presentation or the presenter is nice, <laughs> but you'd be surprised just their voice they have a monotonous voice or a monotone voice and it doesn't hold their attention for a six-year-old and we've we've had that happen this is a trial and error period um and it does keep the price up but it is only for the first couple of years uh, like many other families as you as you get to know your children better and you get to know their strong points and their weak points which is a privilege in homeschooling you get to know it, not some stranger at the school, the big brick school building. Um, you will grow as a teacher parent. And I mean, come on, what better? I, I can't see a, a better situation than that, really. Uh, let's see, what else? You will likely find yourself with a mixed bag of curriculum that works better with certain age groups or certain types of children. With your own family, uh, customization really is what's going to happen. Uh, we use several different curriculum at several different ages uh, for several different children. And, 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 and in the end, I get to figure out what works. My wife gets to figure out what works. And we get to know our children even better. Um, at first, you may feel the investment in some of the curriculum that sat maybe fallow uh, was a waste of money. But, but it wasn't. That was the price of learning. But, but hold on. It's, it's not over yet. You can't know what works without some level of trial and error. And not only that, many of these resources are very resaleable. So you can reclaim some of the investment back. Uh, you could either gift it to somebody or you can sell it on eBay or you can sell it on Craigslist or whatever it is. The, st the, the people eat this stuff up. Um, just because it's not good for you, it might be great for a friend of yours. And if you can sell it to them at somewhat of a discount, you've blessed them. And uh, so it actually, it's not as bad as, as it may always seem. So this is where the tactical nature of my statement comes in. For the busy, quote unquote, working father, the temptation can be, just let her decide. I um, am guilty of this. The problem is uh, if you... If this happens, you can become very detached from the entirety of the school plan. Um, remember, you and she are still one flesh, uh, you know, uh, through work or circumstances. Uh, excuse me, although work and circumstances keep you apart. Uh, you guys are still together, the single force in the house. Um, uh, get to know the routine by any means possible uh <laughs> for the uh I, I am guilty of not doing this in the past because every once in a while i'd be home and she would be out for some odd reason 
and she would say, can you start the kids today? And I found myself, I'd be like, yeah, sure. And I found myself not only not knowing what they were learning, but I didn't even know where the books were or the papers or the pencils. <laughs> you know, it, it was a, a running system that I, I didn't, I was, I was unfamiliar with. And uh, maybe, as humorous as that may seem on the outside, it really isn't, because they're mine. They're ours. We are a, a force together, you know? Um, I found myself being embarrassed, and she was disappointed. And um, that's a dreadful sensation. Uh, after you and your wife have made educational decisions, and if she comes and says she's not sure if it's working, take the time to go over the specifics. Stop what you're doing, dude. Take the time. Talk to her. Don't just be like, listen, this is your thing. No, it's not. It's your thing. And she's helping you. Um, take the time together. Maybe an, enough to review why the item was was employed in your school, in your homeschool plan in the first place, and give it a second try. You know, because sometimes you you'll buy it, you'll try it, you don't like it, everybody's kind of disappointed, and you say, you forget why you said, oh, that was a good idea, that that just may need to be revisited before you throw it away. Um, if after that there is still concern from your wife that something about this item is a problem, and I have this in all capital letters. Do not begrudge her not wanting to continue with it. Most of these things only cost a few hundred bucks. And maybe I said a few hundred bucks a little too easily. But really, it's not worth the frustration for you, her, or the children. It could even do substantial harm to continue in a broken condition just to get your way or just to preserve a couple of hundred bucks as I wrote, uh, that you spent. Remember, she is in the trench. She has been a good soldier so far by just the nature of taking on homeschooling altogether. A good soldier's concerns deserve the respect of consideration. Allow her to pivot, tweak, and spend to bring your mutual vision or your rules of engagement to come to fruition. These are some of the things you do with her. So now for the schooling dad relating directly with your kids. And this is a pretty critical point, uh, dads. Uh, I really want to speak to your heart here. Um, I have come up with a philosophy about friendship. And um, I'm going to say this, and, and I'm actually going to share this directly with the friend that I'm talking about, and I, he will probably understand. Um, I had a very good friend that I knew from kindergarten all through high school. We also worked at a few of the same jobs together in our, our early adulthood. Uh, we were together and close for literally decades. Uh, tough to do when you're only 25, you know, at the time. Around this time, uh, things began to change. He married a woman and his life began uh, to change drastically. Uh, we began to see each other less and less often until eventually the gaps were months and months apart. Each of the new encounters we would have, there was kind of an elephant in the room uh, that was rooted in our lack of common experience. Common experience, that's the, 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 the magic words here. This sensation was uncomfortable for both of us as, as far as I could tell. Uh, as the gaps, grew, uh, the gaps grew larger, there were less and less experiences to rehash, regardless if they were positive or negative. It really didn't matter. That wouldn't matter for good friends, but we were starving for the experiences. As the gaps grew huger, the only experience we had in common were quite old, and the gaps could be felt, and, and it was painful. Till eventually, for several circumstances, we stopped trying. Ten years passed, and we have since reunited, but it has been difficult um, to build the common experience because the damage uh, such a gap played in our lives. 
While pondering this during the years, I came to realize that the key is the common experience, also known as fellowship. That is the glue to building strong bonds. Uh, some are based in time. Some are based in high emotional incidents, such as a car crash or a death, or even things like 9-11. Uh, I remember going to youth group retreats, and some of the days were kind of hyper-emotional, and the bonds were made were extra strong um, and lasted years with people I hardly knew before the event. Um, it, it doesn't have to be complicated. The common experience can be as simple as going to an event or even just a car ride or maybe even a simple walk in the park together. Uh, adding the common experience is adding glue, glue, and more glue to your relationship. Now, let's look at the father's responsibility in this. How far removed is he when he is at work most of the day? Are we following the commands of God mentioned in the Bible, uh, in the Bible for a Christian father? Uh, or are you following the agreed-upon principles you have set for yourself in your constitution or vision or mission statement? I would say hardly. We have a new tool in our toolbox, and that is the internet. Um, the internet and quite a few services it provides can change the game for anyone in a million different ways. But in, in this instance, I have a few specific recommendations. I gotta wet my whistle here, just one second. Ah, delicious. These recommendations will put the father in touch directly with your child's education build tons of the quote-unquote common experience and become more of a co-teacher with your wife, um, which she will appreciate. It's not going to be maybe over the top, but it is indeed something. And it does show that you care and showing that your care will pay off in spades with, with the missus. Um, but, Father, this is going to require you to make real, effectual changes in your attitude and your actions to have any effect whatsoever. Over time, there will be a substantial payoff, though. Um, you will have to dig in into yourself and maybe do some things you really uh, aren't interested in at first, but filter these things through the commands of God and your personal vision and your role and it's really up to you to get it right. I could make a case to not do these things could make you a low-grade deadbeat dad uh, that is still married to the kid's mom and lives in their house. Uh, and that's a pretty big accusation. Uh, you're, you've gone this far as far as homeschooling and not going to take the, the time and do you know what it takes. Um, I know deadbeat dad is a, is a horrible term, but... If you're not really going to be a part, I don't know really what to tell you. Your investment in them is not merely financial to buy them the best or provide the best goods and services. Um, the greatest and most precious thing you can do is the investment of yourself and your time. For us that have extraordinary circumstances, we will do it in a non-traditional way. First, I suggest collaborate with your wife as to some of the subject matters that your kids are going to be doing. Uh, for instance, during quote-unquote morning time, um, my entire group of kids will go over a hymn, an artist, a piece of poetry, or a piece of music. In the margins of your life, Google these subjects, get familiar with them. Go on YouTube, listen to the hymn or the piece of music for or read a quick like wiki article on the artist, the composer, the author, or whatever it is, whatever history piece you might be doing. What are they studying in history? <clears throat> Instead of having lunch with some of the people at work uh, and more likely have a fruitless conversation about the ball game or some other topic, take 10 minutes of that lunch of, of your 30 and some of you 60 minutes of lunch familiarize yourself with the topics your children are being introduced to. You may be surprised that you are now being educated more often than not. 
And by doing so, although you are not together, your minds are having a common experience. I mentioned earlier, this is priceless. I have found uh, the greatest tool to utilize for me is audiobooks. Um, hands down, number one most use, most fruitful thing I have done uh, to build huge amounts of common experience with my kids uh, and their education uh, is to listen to audiobooks. Because of the nature of my work and a significant commute time, I am available to partake in listening to audiobooks at great length. I spent years listening to so-called funny radio shock jocks and rock and roll, and then I thought I was so much smarter. I listened to politics for years. Then I came to Christ, and I listened to sermons from my hours in the car each day, literally for years. Those sermon years were good, and I still do them, but getting my kids' curriculum book list and acquiring them and listening to them while they read them, the amount and value of the common experience I get is completely invaluable. I get to go to the new place and meet all the new people that they get to meet in their minds. I live all the time frames, go through all the happy, scary, sad, and wonderful experiences. After you've read it and they've read it, put down the TV remote or your phone and bring up the story with your child. This has been extremely rewarding uh, for my family. The kids, uh, when they are young, don't realize what you're doing then over time, it will always have been what you did. The olders, we call them olders, um, you find yourselves having very adult conversations about all kinds of topics. Uh, I will admit, not all the books that come up in the curriculum are good. Um, but even the bad books can be great <laughs> common experience. Um, there is one particular book that is hugely popular in the Christian circles. It's won awards. It's even been made into a feature film uh, to huge acclaim. But good grief, the book is terrible. Just awful. Well, guess what? My kids and I laugh often about how in the world such a horribly written book is lauded so high. Moreover, by the very Christian community that we belong to and hold it in such high regard. We brought it up just the other day and several of my kids and my wife, who actually hasn't read it, all took part at rehashing how the book is so bad and our astonishment at its praise. My wife shared common experience by proxy just from my and the kids' reaction to it. I can't remember uh, recommend this option enough for the commuter especially. There are quite a few uh, apps available. Google Play Books, Audible, LibriVox, Libby, Audiobooks.com, Oodles, Kobio, Kobio, I think it is, Kindle for Android. Some of these are pay services, some are free, or they're sort of a free hybrid sort of uh, thing somewhere in between. I think LibriVox is a way to take out an audiobook from a network of libraries and uh, they, they take it away when you're done. Uh, look into your local library. They have uh, tons of audiobooks you could physically take out and play on your CD player if you still got one in the car or whatever. Uh, and my local one, I can digitally check out audiobooks as well, uh, I, I'm, I'm told. Uh, you may balk at the price of these. For an Audible subscription, uh, you get the first book for free. Um, and I think, it, I think mine is $15 a month after that. It's less than $200 a year for a basic, a basic subscription. I just put that price towards the school budget for the year. And it doesn't encroach on, finances, uh, on the financials ne nearly that much. Um, on a side note, I spend as much as, to be honest, five hours a day in the car, not including the work hours. When I finished high school, I ranked dead last. 157 out of 157 students. But now uh, I am currently one of the most well-read individuals I know. Um, it has created the luxury 
and jumped the hurdle at looking at some giant books that would simply have been too daunting to consider um, by virtue of their size. Uh, not only for me, but some of my children as well. Um, for instance, my personal uh, study of the Bible. I listen to the entire Bible at the beginning of every year, 98 hours of listening. And as a Christmas present to myself, I re-listen to Les Miserables at the end of the year, 69 hours of listening. Uh, I've done most of the great, most of the greats, War and Peace, Homer's Iliad, The Odyssey, Don Quixote. Imagine going through these with your kids. These are major, major pieces of literature. And, you know, for that tough guy who would never read such a thing, uh, you might accidentally become a little bit more of an interesting character just by virtue of doing this. And it's because you did it to meet your children. And I don't know, how, how could you turn that down? Uh, let's see. Much of this has changed me. And it humbles me in my view of the world, uh, you know, by reading many of these books. And there I was most of my life, never, ever considering to look into these actual books. Remember when I said I was going to go through these things, you'll get an education too? Well, I certainly meant it. Uh, in the same genre, I highly recommend podcasts. And many of you actually may be quite familiar with podcasts because of, uh, you know, they're 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 not new, but um, you may not consider that some of them might be very useful for your child's education. Um, there is a podcast on almost every topic you can imagine. My personal favorite is Hardcore History with Dan Carlin. Some of his podcast series of the Romans, World War One and World War Two, have I have made mandatory listening for my older students. These aren't thirty or forty minute single episodes. They are four to six hour long episodes in three to six episode series. Truly educational at a very high level. Some of his older stuff is required to pay a dollar a show. It's bundled up in a 60 show package. Um, for 60 bucks, you're getting college level history stuff that is um, going to make your student much, much more um, informed than any class I've ever taken. Uh, a, a truly a small price that fits well within that education budget we mentioned earlier. Are you into engineering? There's a podcast for that. There's more than one. Uh, are you? Do you like architecture? There's podcasts for that. Uh, the Reading Rainbow Guy, uh, LeVar Burton, he has a podcast. Read Aloud Revival, a very serious book podcast, excellent stuff, as well as the Circe Institute uh, with emphasis on classical literature. Do uh, you want to know about Amelia Earhart? There's dozens of podcasts on her. Uh, from gardening to medical to being a pilot to raising backyard chickens, there's more information available than you could possibly listen to in a lifetime. In addition to these, there are true college-level resources through apps like the Great Courses. These are actually college uh, lessons taught from university professors. Um, the topic list <laughs> the, the topic list is endless. Um, these course, all the course lecture plus often some of the worksheet material, exactly the same as you would receive if you went to the university itself. Only you you don't get an actual diploma, but you know in some ways. I kind of feel diplomas by themselves are a little bit overrated, you know. Uh, I see no reason not to employ these resources in my own children's curriculum. And um, you get to reap the benefits uh, at the same time, plus the benefit in the family through common experience. There is also another consideration that can be looked at closely. Every once in a while, even a very busy working father gets an opportunity for a vacation. You may want to consider switching your vacation goals from amusement-oriented uh, to educational, or at least have at least one point that is intentionally educational and then reinforced in your lessons later in the year. 
Uh, for example, my family once bought a pop-up camper and we decided to drive across the country after one of my long jobs had finished. We spent a month on the road. Actually, we formally began the school year two or three days into that trip. Um, a great luxury afforded by homeschooling. Uh, we went to the Creation Museum. We had already listened to the Little House series of books, so we visited some of the locations that the books talked about. Uh, we went to the 1880s town in South Dakota, Mount Rushmore, Crazy Horse, Deadwood, which is the Wild West gold mining town uh, in South Dakota also. Uh, focus on the family to see Wit's End, for those of you who are uh, Adventures and Odyssey fans, um, which is my kids' favorite radio show. Um, Arches National Park, the Grand Canyon, as well as a litany of more amusing stops along the way. I assure you, although they were young at the time, these kids came home with a greater understanding of the country, industry, nature, people, and history than when we left. Guaranteed. Um, we just returned from Maine not too long ago, uh, and I found the kids leading the way in the pursuits of educational travel. They were asking phenomenal questions about what we were doing. You will reap what you sow in all of these things. Next item to bring up is maybe a bit more bold since your wife uh, is so willing and diligent. You may want to consider getting her some help around the house. We employed a house cleaner once or twice a month to help mom get um, life in the home, sort of, what do you say, back to zero. Having someone in is more help than you realize, and she'll be very grateful. Uh, as far as expense, again, consider dipping into, into the agreed-upon schooling budget to get this accomplished. Uh, I have one last and much bolder recommendation. This one, this one may sting. That sting may be a prompting from God in your life or something that has been growing, uh, excuse me, gnawing at you uh, because you deep down know something about the way work interferes with being a father. I've spent an unimaginable amount of time in my car in the last 28 years. The last five, I've spent a lot of time in tears knowing that what I'm doing is not the will of God. I see the passage of time with my children and now am aware of many milestones uh, uh, I've missed. From baby milestones to holidays, birthdays, to recitals, I now know there could be damage that has ra ramifications for generations by my failure. <clears throat> my recommendation is try to find another way. We've tried before with a daycare center. <laughs> what a disaster. <clears throat> Although that was a long time ago. We both know that a change is still necessary. I still have babies in the house. For me, so far, COVID actually has been a blessing. I was laid off from work uh, with some supplemental income to help. I vowed not to waste the time like I did during other long layoff periods uh, over the years. Uh, uh, I fought. <laughs> I fought my lazy nature. Um, to accomplish things. I have became an NRA certified firearms instructor. Um, I received three different certificates in mindset for people experiencing violent uh, and traumatic combat self-defense incidents. Um, I also studied to receive my FAA commercial drone license and started a new business, Corbett Drone Solutions. Um, was born not that long ago. Uh, it is in its infancy. Uh, but my prayer is that it, it is the dawn of, of setting me free from regular wage slave job a hundred miles from home. And I assure you, Spotlight from Home is also one of these, um, within these dreams to, to move me away from something so silly and so foolish as to be away from my family. <clears throat> we are stepping out of the boat yet again. Uh, this business could easily employ several of my children at various levels, whether it's the drones or whether it's the spotlight on home. Um, again, because of the internet, we have access to new opportunities and education for pennies on the dollar.
for that kind of access. There's never been a time like now. Please pray for me. Uh, please pray for my wife and for my children. Pray for this venture of Spotlight on Home, Corbett Drone Solutions, and um, just our family in general. Uh, that we become more in line with uh, with God, that I'm the better father and husband that uh, God would want me to be. And for all of this, I will be praying for you also. And I am so appreciative of the time together. And um, I wish you the best. Take care.